Hey, Dr. Echo Rivera here. Let's talk fonts. This is one of my absolute favorite slide design topics. I could probably talk for hours about typography design and fonts, but this is going to be a short video to get you started. We are just going to answer the top two questions that I get from people who want to take that next level with their font or typography design in their presentations. So we're going to talk about where to find fonts and how to add them so that they are available in PowerPoint or Apple Keynote. Before we get started, just in case you are new to my channel and have no idea who I am, hi, Dr. Echo Rivera here, and I help people who share data create engaging presentations. I mostly work with academics and researchers or people who kind of took this non-academic path like evaluation or independent research consultant, community educator, we have all sorts of titles, but we are united in the effort to end death by PowerPoint and share our data or dry educational material in engaging ways. So welcome. If that sounds good to you, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and all, all of that good stuff. Okay, so the idea for this video actually came from a viewer, uh, awesome, and they are someone who participated in my masterclass training and they sent this like lovely email that just totally made my day, thank you, and then asked a great question. They said, can I ask you about fonts, please? I like the way you have a bold type font with some handwritten style font mixed in for some of your slides, which I like. I like that too. Can you please tell me where is a good place to get these fonts or maybe consider a new YouTube shorty on the subject, please? And when I saw this email, I was like, yes, I can do a YouTube shorty on this. Thank you for the idea. Uh, so by the way, I am definitely open to ideas. If you have an idea for a video, please post it in a comment and we do check those out and read them and consider them for video ideas. Okay. All right. So shall we get started? So where can you find great fonts to use in your presentations? Now, PowerPoint does have a lot of great fonts. You know, there's classics like Arial in there that are great. But yeah, I do actually mostly use fonts that I have found on the internet. <laughs> so I do have to sort of give a first disclaimer here that this will involve downloading files from the internet. So you have to be really careful. You have to be smart, do things like backing up your system regularly, just in case, um, you know, you just want to watch out for malware or ransomware. You know, you just want to be careful about that. I have had a couple bad experiences where I downloaded some malware and I had to restore my computer and it sucked, but you know, I think it's happened like twice over the last, I don't know, 25 years, but it's still, again, something to be really careful about. And you have to be careful about where you click on these free font websites because they do a lot of ads. That's how they make their money. You know, they need to get paid. And so the ads look like links sometimes. I think that's actually how I got malware. I think it was because I clicked on the wrong thing. I clicked on an ad instead of the actual font. So yeah, just seriously be careful. I don't know if you know this, but before you click on a link, if you hover it, it tells you where like, the link is going like somewhere on your browser, you know, do things like hover first, look, make sure it doesn't look sus or whatever. Um, okay. So yeah, disclaimer over. With that said, let's start with the best free option that I have found. It is called Font Squirrel. I absolutely love this website. It is where you can get fonts for free. So yes, there are ads. Again, they need to make their money. Um, but you know, so just, just keep that in mind, watch out for those, but yeah, it's, you get a visual preview of the fonts. It's a huge selection and they have so, so many fonts to download. I don't even want to admit how long I was spent on this website. Okay. Like, I'm just not even going to say the number. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. <laughs> but yeah, what I love about Font Squirrel is that it's not just a big mega website of fonts. They have categories and tags that make sense and make it super easy to search for the type of font that you're looking for. And I have, look, 
I have used a lot of different sites for downloading fonts in my day. I come from the AOL days, right? Where we had like five choices for fonts for our AIM, <laughs> AOL Instant Messenger. And Comic Sans was, of course, my go-to because it was fun. So yeah, as soon as more options starting started to open up, I was all over them. So I have used a lot of font websites. And in my opinion, Font Squirrel has like the best way to navigate through the site. So it's it's part of why I love it. The other reason I love it is it is free for commercial use. Ah, this part is what makes it extra awesome to use. Because a problem you might run into when looking at these type of websites is that they'll do things like you can only use this font for like really limited uses, like personal use. Um, and it's just really hard to keep track of that once you download a font and install it. Like, you know, like you can't like keep a list of fonts that you're allowed to use in this situation and that situation. Like no one has time for that. You don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. So I really like just like I literally choose one website that I go to for free fonts. So I know every single font that I've downloaded is free for commercial use. It's just sort of like the most flexible license that exists. Um, so that's just another reason that I like Font Squirrel and I recommend it. And that's it. That's the one website that I recommend for free fonts. I don't have like a list of 100. <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm you or give you decision fatigue. It's just Font Squirrel. And again, the main reason is that everything is free for commercial use. So you don't have to keep track of things. Super easy. Now, if you want to pay for fonts, <laughs> then I can't really think of a better place than creative markets. Again, one thing that really matters is how easy it is to use and navigate. So categories, filters, things like that. Um, seeing a preview of the font in different ways. So creative market really has you covered for this. And I really think that creative market is one of the best websites for fonts and they have other things too um so you know creative market is a great one if you actually want to pay for a font now for years they used to offer a free weekly newsletter that had six freebies um and you're probably going to come across something somewhere where i recommended this because i was on that email list for literally years and i loved it and recommended it but like two weeks before I recorded this video, it looks like they stopped. Um, so good timing <laughs> for once, uh, because otherwise that video would have been outdated in like a week. But yeah, I didn't see an announcement. I think they just stopped and replaced it with something that they're calling drops. And it's like asset drops or drops or something like that. So it looks like you have to pay a monthly fee. It's a small monthly fee. And then you do get tons of free downloads like after that. So um, I neither endorse this and neither do I not recommend this. That's a lot of double negatives there. Basically, I'm kind of neutral on this. Um, I did want to share it because I do like creative market. And during those weeks, I was getting those freebies. I got a lot of fonts from them and other graphics and things like that. So I just, you know, I've, I've had a really good experience with creative market in that way. So I just wanted to share that with you. So it's something that you could look into. And if it looks right for you, then go for it. And as a matter of fact, if you have this or you end up doing this, please come back to the comments and report like, did you like it? Like, you know, does it feel worth it? I'm I'm actually curious what others think of this as well. Um, but yeah, I, you know, Creative Market is a really good place to check out. So that's it. Again, I don't want this to be just like an overwhelming list of like 20 million websites to go to. Those are just like my personal favorites. For free fonts, check out Font Squirrel. And for paid fonts, check out Creative Market. So once you have your fonts, basically, how do you get them on your computer? How do you get them into PowerPoint and Keynote? This is so easy. You're going to love it. Remember, though, right, we're downloading from the Internet. So do backups. Be smart. Right. Disclaimer, disclaimer. OK, first, quick definition of what you're going to see when you get into this like font file downloading world. There are two file extensions for fonts. So file extension, again, that's things like .doc for Word, .pptx for PowerPoint, right? Like that kind of thing. 
So in the font world, you'll see .otf for open type font and .ttf for true type font, okay? What do these mean? All that stuff I'm definitely not talking about in this video. If you are just like geeking out right now and you want to learn the difference, the font spring has an article that explains this and I will link to it below so you can go on a deep dive more power to you I love it fellow typeface geek <laughs> here um and by the way font spring is font squirrel's sister site and font spring is where you can purchase fonts as well so it is something else to consider I just personally enjoy the creative market interface a little bit more but you know again there there's another option for paid fonts. Okay, anyway, the TLDR version of this article is download one of them. Like if you see both OTF and TTF, choose one. And if you have that choice, choose OTF. Again, if you wanna learn more, I'll link to that um, in the description below. All right, so now that you know, let's go back to Font Squirrel and go through and um, you know, what are the steps for getting the font? So let's say that you're on font squirrel, you're scrolling and scrolling and you see a font that you like, what do you do? Here's a sample. We'll use the font belligerent madness, which perfectly explains how I am every morning before I have my coffee. So why not? <laughs> so another reason I love font squirrel is that it is very clear where that download button is. So yes, they have ads, but they typically don't get in the way or confuse you on where you're supposed to click. It's literally like download on the same bar, basically, as you know, in the font like section. So click that. Um, and basically when you click that, it's going to just like download, like it, it automatically downloads into your computer and it will download inside of a zipped folder. So then you basically just like go to your downloads folder and do that thing you do to unzip files. It depends on whether you're a Mac or a windows or whatever in windows, you know, I right click and choose extract all, but basically, you know, do that. And then you just look for the font file that you want. So again, you're looking for OTF if it's there. In this case, it's not, it's just TTF. Oh, well, no problem. And you just double click that font file. In this case, because we only have that one true type file that it's, it's pretty easy and fast to do. But sometimes you're actually gonna see like multiple in one folder and that's because each styling is technically a separate file so like let's say if there was belligerent bold belligerent italics belligerent regular belligerent extra bold you know like whatever it is sometimes one font will have all those different styles so you'll need to double click on every single one of them and go through this process for every single one it's really fast it's it's you know, it, it does not take long to do that, but just, just keep that in mind. So after you double click one of the files, basically some automatic stuff is gonna start happening. Again, in Windows, this is what it looks like, but it's very similar for Mac. Um, you get, you sort of see it in the classic saying, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and you just click that install button. And that's it. And so like, you know, like, let's say if there's five different styles, you just like double click, this pops up, you click install, you click X, double click the next one, install X, double click the next one, install it, right? It just becomes like a little, a little flow, like a nice flow that you're just like clicking a few things. So you install all of them and then basically you can restart the computer. It is recommended. Do I personally do that? Um, I'd rather not say, um, I, I neither confirm nor deny. Um, no, I don't. I just restart the software. So like if PowerPoint was open, I close PowerPoint, <laughs> but you should restart. That's what the professionals say. And then you just like reopen PowerPoint or Keynote if you're on a Mac and it will just be there with all of the other fonts. Like that's seriously it. It is so easy to get a font into PowerPoint. You don't really have to do anything special. You just install the font on your computer by double clicking it and then it will just be there. And again, if you're on a Mac, it's a very similar process and you can always just Google like how to install fonts on a Mac. It's usually just a couple clicks and it's super fast and super easy. Okay, 
All right, I promise to keep this video short. And I know that there are a lot of other options for fonts, but these are the ones that I personally use that have sped up my own workflow and have worked really well for years. So they are the ones that I felt confident in sharing and recommending with you. But hey, if you've got one that you love, then comment below and share your favorites. And again, if you do end up like testing out that creative market thing, let us know how it goes. And yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, subscribe, like all that good stuff. And yeah, this is actually the first video that I'm making based on a direct question from a viewer. So if you have ideas and suggestions, comment below and let me know. Now, in terms of questions like what fonts, what typefaces do I use? How do I design them like you're doing in your slides? How do I make them look good? When do I use certain fonts? When do I not use certain fonts? What font sizes do I use? What colors do I use? Ah, in terms of those kinds of specific design questions, those are questions that I answer in my presentation training, my presentation skills masterclass series. And the first two courses in particular really focus on making sure you have those typography design skills so that you can take the text in your presentation and make that text look engaging and beautiful and not like a death by PowerPoint wall of text. So now that you know where to find fun and fancy fonts, if you'd like to learn how to use those new fonts properly, then check out my masterclass training. In fact, the opening part of this email was about how this masterclass training helped them. They were part of a training that I provided to NUI Galway for early career researchers, and they took the first course in my series, Fail Proof Slide Design. And this person said that they found it helped them, um, helped them so much they said, I have been giving public talks and college lectures regularly for years, but I realize now that while my subject has broad public appeal and that I am a good speaker, my slides were not boosting the talk. So common. They said, I am really enjoying making new presentations, which is music to my eyes, music to my ears. <laughs> so if you've been giving class lectures or public talks for years and want that kind of breath of fresh air so that your slides do actually boost your talk instead of distract from the talk or drag the talk down, then definitely check out my masterclass. If you're ready to just join, the link is below. Or if you're not sure, or if you're worried that I'm gonna tell you to do things that take forever to do, then you need to check out my free training video where I share my system that I use that speeds up the presentation design process so it doesn't take forever. And at the end of that free training workshop, you will learn a little bit more about my masterclass training program if you're interested. So either way, that is a great next step. Sign up for my free training below. All right, now the most common question that I get is, what did you use to create your videos, Echo? And the answer is good old PowerPoint. No fancy app required to make fun, engaging presentations. Alrighty, if you enjoyed this video and learned something new and useful, please hit that like, subscribe, and bell button. It really, really helps a lot with YouTube, if you know someone who is interested in fonts, <laughs> then please share this video with them. And again, if you want to improve your presentation skills and if you want to learn typography design, then your next step is to sign up for my free training workshop. The link is in the description below. All right, that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.